It started as routine dome growth on Mayon Summit. Then, in 24 hours, 16 pyroclastic flows thundered down the slopes, and thousands were forced to evacuate as alert levels rose again. The volcano's steep cone is channeling deadly surges. Scientists warn of escalating activity. Is this just Mayon's familiar threat, or is it the start of something the region has not seen in years? The answer lies in what happens next. In the early hours of January 6th, the summit of Mayan Volcano was restless. Fivolk's observers recorded a sudden surge in activity. At 12.26 in the afternoon, a dome collapse triggered a pyroclastic density current that swept nearly two kilometers down the Bonga Gully on the southeast flank. Within minutes, the volcano's steep cone funneled hot ash, gas, and shattered rock at high speed, leaving a visible scar along the established drainage. This was not an isolated event. Over the next several hours, the monitoring network documented five separate pyroclastic flows and 131 rockfalls, evidence that the summit dome was rapidly destabilizing. Each collapse sent fresh clouds of ash drifting across the landscape as gray-brown plumes rose hundreds of meters above the vent and drifted east-northeast, visible even from distant towns. By midday on January 7th, the pattern intensified. Between 12.26 and 4.30 in the afternoon, Fivolks recorded 16 distinct pyroclastic density currents, all channeling down the Bonga Gully. Ash clouds from these flows climbed roughly 200 meters above the summit, while the Tokyo Volcanic Ash Advisory Center tracked plume heights between 2.4 and 3 kilometers above sea level, drifting northwest and east-northeast. Public live streams and field cameras captured a near-continuous glow at the summit, with incandescent rockfalls tumbling down the upper slopes and occasional bursts of ash billowing skyward. The frequency and regularity of these flows signaled a shift from isolated incidents to a sustained eruptive sequence. Instead of a single dramatic explosion, Mayan was producing repeated fast-moving surges, each one hazardous on its own, and collectively raising the risk for communities along the southeast sector. The Bonga Gully, already known as a primary hazard channel, became the main conduit for these flows. Its path etched deeper with every new event. Fivio LCS field teams and duty volcanologists worked around the clock, logging each collapse and tracking the evolving plume heights. The escalation was clear in the raw numbers. On January 6th and 7th alone, more than 20 pyroclastic flows descended the slopes, each triggered by fresh dome collapse or oversteepened lava spines. The volcano's behavior was no longer routine, with every new flow, the danger zone became more than a line on a map. It became a boundary between safety and the unpredictable force of Mayan's dome-driven eruptions. Mayan's near-perfect cone, rising more than 2,400 meters above the plains of Albay, is more than a landmark. It is a geological trap. Forty deep ravines radiate from the summit like spokes, each one a ready-made channel for volcanic debris. When the lava dome at the top grows unstable, Gravity does the rest. Even a small collapse can unleash a block and ash flow, a dense avalanche of hot rocks, ash, and gas that races down these gullies at speeds that can reach highway speed limits. The steepness of Mayan's upper slopes, often over 30 degrees, means that material does not linger. It accelerates, hugging the ground, funneled by the smooth symmetrical flanks that have built up over centuries of eruptions. Unlike the slow-moving lava seen at other volcanoes, Mayon's magma is thick and sticky, classified as andesitic. This viscosity causes new lava to pile up at the summit, forming domes that cannot easily spread out. Instead, these domes grow taller and steeper until their own weight, or the force of rising gas, causes them to break apart. When a section of the dome collapses, the debris does not simply tumble. It fragments and mixes with searing volcanic gases, creating a pyroclastic density current. These flows are ground-hugging and fast, capable of overwhelming anything in their path within minutes. The network of ravines plays a decisive role. Each channel acts as a chute, focusing the energy and debris of a collapse into a narrow corridor. This is why communities lying at the mouths of these gullies are at special risk, even if the eruption itself is not especially violent. 
During the current crisis, the Bonga Gully has become the main conduit. But history shows that any of the 40 ravines can serve as a pathway for destruction if the dome collapses in a different direction. Mayan's reputation for symmetry is a warning, not a reassurance. The same geometry that draws tourists also ensures that even moderate dome failures can send deadly flows far down slope, sometimes without dramatic explosions or warning signs. For scientists, this means constant vigilance. For residents, it means that the difference between safety and disaster can be measured in minutes and meters, depending on where a collapse begins and which channel it follows. The hazard here is not a river of glowing lava, but a sudden invisible avalanche that can turn a tranquil slope into a deadly corridor in seconds. Inside the Mayan Volcano Observatory, a network of sensors and cameras feeds a steady stream of data to 5 EOLCS scientists. Every tremor, every rockfall, and every plume of gas is logged and analyzed in real time. For more than a year and a half, ground deformation instruments have tracked subtle but persistent inflation on the volcano's flanks evidence that magma has been rising and accumulating beneath the surface. This slow, steady swelling is not always visible to the naked eye, but for the scientists monitoring it, the numbers speak volumes. On January 2nd, sulfur dioxide emissions measured 288 tons per day within background levels. Three days later, that figure more than doubled to 702 tons per day, confirming that fresh magma was degassing near the summit and feeding the growing lava dome. Five VOLCS volcanologists rely on a combination of seismic sensors, gas analyzers, and ground, ground deformation tools to build a picture of Mayan's evolving state. When rockfall counts surged from an average of 21 per day in December to more than 130 in a single day by early January, the monitoring team recognized the dome was becoming unstable. Nighttime cameras captured the glow of fresh lava and the rapid growth of new spines at the summit while tilt meters and GPS stations confirmed the volcano's flanks remained inflated. These multiple lines of evidence, seismic, thermal, geodetic, and gas, are what drive the decisions behind alert level changes and evacuation orders. A USGS volcanologist puts it simply, scientists look for patterns. When rising gas, swelling ground, and frequent collapses occur, that is when the risk of dangerous flows goes up. The international standard is clear. Evacuations and hazard zones are based on measured data, not on speculation or fear. For Mayon, the science is always running in the background, guiding every warning and every decision as conditions evolve. Shelters across Albay now hold more than 3,400 people. Each family carried what they could as they left homes inside the six kilometer danger zone. Classrooms and town gyms have become makeshift dormitories, with children sleeping on mats and parents lining up for water and food rations. The evacuation order, issued just hours after the first major pyroclastic flow on January 6th, is not a reaction to panic. It is a measured response to the realities of Mayan's behavior and the risks mapped by scientists. For many, the disruption is immediate and personal. Livelihoods are paused, schools are closed or relocated. Some farmers and workers, worried about crops and livestock left behind, weigh the risk of returning, despite warnings that the boundary between safety and danger can shift in minutes. Local authorities and volunteer drivers organize convoys, moving residents out of high-risk barangays as new flows are detected or alert levels change. The logistics are complex, but the goal remains clear, keep people outside the reach of sudden ground-hugging avalanches that can overrun gullies faster than anyone can escape. Scientists warn of increased instability, and authorities monitor seismic signals, gas emissions, lava dome growth, and the frequency of pyroclastic flows. Activity has escalated in recent days, and evacuations expanded to cover more communities as conditions evolved. Officials emphasize that decisions are data-driven, aimed at reducing risk while monitoring the volcano closely. What happens next is uncertain, and officials are frank about potential scenarios. If current trends hold, Mayan could remain in a controlled, effusive phase with lava dome growth and small flows, and thousands staying in shelters as monitoring continues. If the unrest stretches on, danger zones may be extended to seven or eight kilometers in sectors where flows could reach farther, forcing more families into evacuation centers and prolonging disruption for weeks or even months. If seismic signals and gas emissions spike, 
and larger collapses send pyroclastic flows beyond the current danger zone, authorities are prepared to clear entire communities at short notice, expanding evacuations to tens of thousands. Each scenario is grounded in real-time data, not speculation, and every decision aims to keep the risk as low as possible for those living in Mayon's shadow. Today, more than 25,000 people remain in evacuation centers as Mayon's alert level holds. Scientists warn that real-time monitoring, not predictions, makes survival possible. As volcanic risks intensify worldwide, Mayon reminds us, vigilance saves lives, and nature's timeline is not ours. Stay alert and stay informed.